Hello everyone, it's Brittany again, and today we have Robert, and we are going to discuss something called biomineralization. Robert, mm -hmm. when you hear the word biomineralization, what do you think of? Well, it sounds like something organic or a living organism mm -hmm. becoming a mineral. Very good. So a biomineral is a mineral that was essentially formed from a living organism so that and can include things such as, you know, people like us, we create our own biominerals. And then there's plants and then there's bacteria. The most common biominerals that you all have probably heard of is minerals such as like bones, corals, pearls, teeth, but there's so many more. What's kind of neat about biominerals is that their structures are completely different than what their geological counterparts. You know, rocks and minerals, they have their certain crystallographic structure, but like when it comes to being formed by organic life, it kind of like takes on completely different forms, which is pretty, pretty cool. I think cool. that's pretty cool. In most cases, these minerals aren't just, you know, formed for fun. They're kind of made to be kind of like a core aspect to the organism itself. Like so, an essential part. Yeah, like an essential part of the organism. Okay, like what? Bones. <laughs> you need those. I feel like I need my bones. <laughs> just, just a little bit to a... Uh, I wouldn't be much Oof. without my bones. So I named the few biominerals earlier of bones, teeth, pearls, and coral. That kind of like main group is from calcium carbonates. And that's kind of, I would say the main, like probably the largest biomineral group of just the things that are formed because it's such an important part to a lot of living organisms. Mm -hmm. But with that, there's a lot of other different mineral groups and those are formed from bacteria. And I'm gonna name a few more groups. So let's start with iron sulfides. So these minerals are formed from bacteria that live in anaerobic environments. So there's like no oxygen where they live. So there's minerals such as pyrite that are formed from these bacteria. So these bacteria in the anaerobic environments with no oxygen are very important to the geochemistry of sediments and soils. So another type of biomineral that bacteria can form is calcium oxalates. And these are the kind of minerals that are formed in plant tissues, animal exoskeletons, and the lovely, lovely kidney stone. Knowing about calcium oxalates, especially to the human body, is important to the medical field. There are certain types of bacteria that can also form the mineral group known as manganese oxides, and these biominerals are important to the soils in aquatic environments. And these particular biominerals are very helpful to those environments because they remove toxins and pollutants from the soil. There are also bacteria that live in environments with very high concentrations of zinc, and those bacteria actually produce zinc sulfide minerals and minerals such as sphalerite. Now we've talked about sphalerite before on the channel. Very, very neat mineral, very, very high dispersion. Mm -hmm. Really it's cool. It's crazy to think that that mineral can be produced by a living microorganism. If those concentrations from the bacteria are big enough, they can actually be a small source of zinc ore that can be mined for. Contributing to the economy. <laughs> so I named several big mineral groups that bacteria can form, but there's so many more out there. There are other specific minerals such as gertite, there's woolite, that's a fun one. There's lepidocrosite, vivianite, apatite, that's some of the stuff made with your teeth. It's easy yeah, to remember. Are. But there's also struvite, selenite, and magnetite. Those are some people can know of. Yeah, no, that's super cool. I, yeah. uh, you don't think about uh, living organisms. Mm no matter how small, producing minerals like that. Biominerals are a very core part to a lot of organisms mm -hmm. that we just don't really think of. So it sounds to me like with such a variety of biominerals and their sources, that they would have a wide range of potential applications, various scientific fields, yeah? True. The The main field biomineralization is important for is definitely the medical field, but there's a few other areas where biominerals are important. There is development of new materials. There's also the treatment of certain diseases, and then there's also environmental remediation. So there's kind of, you know, a really a big world to explore out there with Biominerals. Rob, was there anything that you found pretty interesting about 
biomineralization today. I went into this kind of thinking about like organic gems, like mm. pearl, but also amber, which is not a mm. biomineral. And it's, I think it's really cool how essential biominerals are to the foundation of life. Mm -hmm. You know, from, from my teeth to the exoskeleton of like an ant. Oh, well, thanks for talking to me about biominerals today, Brittany. I think it's really cool that some minerals can form as a result of natural geological processes, but also mm. natural biological processes as well. Thank you all so much for watching this video today. If you liked it, feel free to like, subscribe, and ring the bell so you don't miss out on future episodes. Mm -hmm.